he killed people who were 76 and 78 years old. Now you tell me what you want to. That's demonic. That's what makes a 73 year old man do such a thing. You'd think a crazy wild kid would do that. Not 73 year old men. Pastor, what are you trying to say tonight? I'm trying to say God wants this church to be a church of deliverance and healing and authority and power. God wants us to be a church that's not above other churches, but is operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. That has the gifts of the Spirit available. Where we walk in the door, we don't just come to church hoping we'll hear some nice singing or we'll hear some nice preaching. Now we come expecting the supernatural power of God to be displayed where God can show off. Can I say it again? God's looking for a place to show off. God's looking for a place where He can be glorified. Wouldn't it be wonderful if God took the Kingsway Christian Center right here in Baltimore and spoke to the entire city and the surrounding cities and the Lord Himself would send people and say, if you want deliverance and healing, that's where you go, right there. Wouldn't it be wonderful if people in this city would say, if you need help, if you need prayer, if you need something from God, that's the church to go to, right there. You'll find the power of God. But it's not going to happen. If there's any bitterness or unforgiveness, or infighting, Willingness to let go of the past. I'm telling you. It'll never happen. It'll be church as always. And I believe God has come to give us an opportunity. Not because I'm here. But I do know we're on divine assignment here. We're on divine assignment. And I believe the Holy Ghost is going to show it. See, I grew up in the power of God. I grew up in a home where my grandparents raised me. Where we believed in the power of God. Where prayer and fasting was often. And where when we went to church, we expected God to move. But you know what? Most folks, and I'm not critical. It's just a fact. Most folks view church as a place to come have a fellowship and a social. And, and have a good, you know, good time. And we just enjoy coming to church. It's a nice thing to do. But God's idea of church is a group of called out ones. The ecclesia. The called out ones. The ones who are making a difference in their world. Who are turning the town upside down. Who are taking territory from the devil. Who are not afraid of the power of God. As a matter of fact, they pray for Holy Ghost rain. When I was a boy, one of the things I always loved was to hear the frogs made in the evening. I'm a country boy. But I love to hear the frogs singing. And every evening you could hear the cicadas of the frogs out there just singing. And I finally said to my granddad one day, I said, Granddad, what are those frogs and cicadas doing? He said, they're praying for rain. <laughs> I said, why? He said, yeah, but I'm praying for rain here. And they were just croaking all over the place. Not dying. They were croaking. Singing. They're praying for rain. Oh, but the church of Jesus. And I pray it doesn't take bondage. Like the children of Israel had endured and hardship and Egyptian task. But you know, sometimes it takes a taskmaster to make us pray. The devil can be a hard taskmaster. Sometimes it takes difficult circumstances to make us turn to heaven. You know why the Bible says it's hard for a rich man to get to heaven? Because we get comfortable. If there's one thing money can do, money can buy you a lot of comfort. 
but it can't buy you salvation. You know what they say one of the major keys to church growth is today? Let me show you how things have changed in the church world. Does anybody here remember a time when we went to church and we didn't have padded views? And we didn't have air conditioning? Didn't have, I mean, we had funeral home fans. Anybody remember that? But people came to church and filled the house because they were hungry for the presence of God. They knew without God intervening in their situation, nothing was going to happen. They were hopeless. But they're telling me now that in these, of course, I have a Master of Ministry degree in church revitalization. And one of the things they told us in those classes was in order to grow a church, you make people as comfortable as you can make them. That Americans today are looking for two things. Choices and comfort. I thought, wow. Choices and comfort. But when we start seeking God and crying out to God, we're not going to be comfortable. We've got beautiful buildings. I mean, they're, they're, hey, when we stand in the presence of God, we're not going to be able to say, God, you made it hard for me. You made it hard for me to pray. You made it hard for me to worship. Look around at these buildings. Air conditioning, padded views. I mean, about anything you want. So we won't be able to say to God, you made it difficult. If we don't have the power and presence of God, it won't be because we were not comfortable. But when we get to the place that we're desperate for a move of God. When your child in the night has a fever, it can't be cooled with medicine. You need a higher power. When the doctor's not on call, we need a higher power. When we're at the hospital in the middle of the night, we need a higher authority. When we don't know how the bills are going to get paid, we need a higher authority and a higher power. And folks, it's not going to come until God's people cry out for the supernatural. Do you want to see the supernatural again? I have people tell me all the time, Pastor, I want to see it like it used to be. Like it used to be. Well, do you realize... It doesn't have to be like it used to be. It can be greater than it used to be. Because God hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's ever more the same. Would you join me in crying out for the supernatural? In crying out for the power of God? In crying out, what if somebody, you, you know, we never know. What we'll have to confront. John Hagee, do you, have you heard his story recently? Where this crazy man just broke into the church and shot at him six times at close range. And the bullets flew right by. Five on this side, one on this side. I mean, the man is shooting straight at him, point blank. And God shielded him because he stood on the Word of God. Amen? We don't know. We're dealing with terrorism on the level. And you can believe this. The Holy Spirit's already shown me. Massive attacks and retaliation are coming against the United States. The enemy's plotting and planning now. A statement just released by Al-Qaeda was, listen, America's rejoicing now. They'll be crying soon. And if you think they're going to quit, brother, sister, that's demonic. When they'll take our soldiers and take people and saw their heads off in na on national TV, but then screaming bloody murder, that's demonic. When babies are being thrown in trash cans and left to drown in their own blood. I read a story recently of a nurse that watched a baby aborted and it was still alive. 
it survived the saline solution. And they throwed it in a bucket. And the little thing was still moving, trying to catch its breath. And the nurse begged the doctor, if you let me, I'll take that baby and raise it. Nobody will ever know. And she watched that baby gurgle and strangle on its own blood. A group of hunters not long ago found babies thrown out in a field. Not even a dog dies like that. But the babies were left in the field. Right there in Myrtle Beach, a young mother left her baby in a ditch in a cardboard box. The little thing froze to death. They got a building memorial to it. The Bible said in the last days, there wouldn't be much conscience. Mothers would be without natural affection. Folks, somebody somewhere has got to pray for the supernatural power of God to turn the tide with every hand bowed. I've spoken my heart tonight. You know what I'm going to do? I just want to, I just want to turn this service over to the Holy Ghost and tell you to obey the Lord. And I just want to turn this, this truly over to the Spirit of God tonight and ask you to obey the Holy Ghost. Mm, I feel a powerful presence of God. And then I want to say, whatever He tells you to do, do it. Whatever He tells you to do, do it. If it's come to the altar, come and pray, bind together, two or three, whatever God says to you, let's move in the supernatural right now. Let's ask God to help us move in the supernatural.